So this is Dawn of Man, and I picked this up on Steam um, a couple weeks ago, and I've really, really enjoyed it. It's it's a lot like the game of Banished. Um, if you've ever played that game, it's a lot of fun. It's basically an open world, kind of just a city building kind of a game, and you control your population. Um, I would actually very much say it is Banished in me, uh, prehistoric times. Um, so to go through some of the settings, um, very, very basic. Um, I had to turn the music volume way, way down. Um, typical for most games, in my personal opinion. I think they crank that music volume up way too much. Uh, quality, you can go up to ultra. Um, I happen to have a 1440p monitor, so I don't know if this is actually in 4K or not, but it does do 1440p. Um, controls are very, very... Um, simplistic. Um, they have a tutorial that kind of really helps you out as far as getting set up in the game. Um, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and do new game. Um, I rebuilt this computer recently, so all of my saved data I haven't quite um, transferred it over yet. But I'm going to skip the tutorial. And there is the Continental Dawn. And I'm going to go ahead and start there. That is the first place that you can go to. Um, I always like the, the forest river and the reason why is you get a lot of nice uh, lush forest over here and then you have an access to the water and your village actually starts right here by the water. Um, but you have all these different starting points. Um, all of them you know, have their pros and cons. And we'll go ahead and name this, uh, I don't know, Awesome Town. Um, you can do the, uh, you can actually change your, your location here or you can simply click over here. Um, game mode, there's either normal or hardcore, um, and as you can see on hardcore, you can have one saved game. Um, as weird as it is, you cannot pause the game. I don't know. I haven't uh, actually really played on that, but that's the only two game modes. There's normal and, and hardcore. Normal is really not that bad, so um, I was, really wasn't missing like an easy mode or anything like that. There is two different types of modes for starting condition, though. There is settled, and then there's nomad. Uh, nomad, you actually just start with like eight people I think it is and there is nothing there there's no tents you know there's no um, no structures whatsoever but you do get extra resources at the start um, settled you start with some um, actual structures and you have a little bit less um, of the things so I'm actually like real nitpicky and I love to place my own thing so I'm gonna start out in Nomad um, the loading times are, are actually really really cool um, this is really really a fascinating game so there's a lot of Things that are now extinct like your woolly mammoths there's the woolly rhinos um, and as you progress through the game there's actually one spot in the game and I'll show you later um, where that is but there's actually like the copper age and bronze age and I noticed with an earlier game that when I hit that particular era um, they were actually extinct it said woolly mammoth is now extinct or something like that so I don't know um, how many years you know I was actually playing per the game time uh, but it was really really cool so here, um, I'm going to go ahead and pause this really, really quick. Um, and we have a couple of different speeds. I'll be honest, the normal is like slow-mo. I usually keep it on speed of 8. Um, this is like a, some type of a goat. Um, and you can later on actually uh, domesticate them and, and keep them in shelters. Um, so like I said, we start by this little stream. I have a sneeze coming up. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergy season. Um, so we start out by this stream here, and there's going to be some fish that we can actually harvest. Now, I've actually tried to click on these birds, uh, but there's nothing really you can do. They're just kind of uh, there. <laughs> uh, if anybody's ever played the old Oregon Trail, you could actually shoot uh, the birds when you went hunting. That, that's actually not the case from what I found. Um, when you do this later on, there's actually mud, um, and you will need that later on for later ages to build um, higher level of structures. So we have our stone um, and you can actually set work areas to gather like a, a in a radius of, of different amounts. Um, there's sticks that you can gather over here. Um, in the beginning, that's primarily what you will need is your sticks and stones. Um, later on, you can actually cut down the, the trees and get actual lumber to make more sophisticated structures. Um, tannin is, uh, I'm not exactly sure what it, exactly that is to be honest with you, but um, it has to do with um, like dyeing your materials and things like that, like your leather. You can actually gather um, different types of grain um, that naturally grow. So there's um, like sweet peas or whatever those are, um, strawberries, raspberries. Um, there's going to be, these are megaliths. And later on, you will be able to um, 
you do two things. You need to mine it. So you, I, to me, that means like you're shaping it and then you can actually drag it to where you need. And I actually, in a, uh, one of my games, actually created like a stone henge. It was super cool to see the, you know, my, my workers um, dragging this across the mountainside. is really, really cool. Um, we have flint over here, which you can gather. Um, you can either gather it by hand or like I said, you can actually create work areas. And then you can actually create your uh, hunting grounds. Now later on, uh, ooh, these are some ancient bison. That's pretty cool. They're, uh, they give you some pretty good amount of meat and, and hide and things like that. Um, let me see if I can find some mountainside. So later on, you're going to get into the copper age, and you're going to need some copper. And you'll build a mine over this. And then this is flint. Um, when it's on the mountainside like that, you can actually build a mine and, and actually extract even more flint than you would normally do from just the ground. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and start our settlement. Um, the the menu will go away, and if you just click anywhere, it'll typically um, come right back up. So the residence, um, all we have right now is a basic shelter with tent. Um, we'll need four sticks and two hides, and we can go ahead and build that. Now, we have no room for anybody else. Um, nobody will actually um, give birth to to new babies or children and no new people you, you actually have nomads that will come into your your settlement later on uh, if you have open um, basically spaces for them to, to come um, so I like to build these in kind of like a long rows I like kind of build them in rows um, is what I'll do. So I'm, I typically I build about four of them in the beginning um, because we have seven, um, but you want to have room for some growth and nomads, like I said. Um, I thought this was kind of weird. It's just kind of a pet peeve of mine. And I know they probably have a lot of different patches or, or tweaks that they're going to make with the game, um, but they have the stables um, for your goat domestication, like whenever you, you actually have like your horses, your donkey, you know, wherever it may be, um, they're in the residence. I kind of thought that was personally kind of odd. Um, we're needed some storage areas. So we have the big storage tents. And what this will do is allow us to store all of our food and our, um, there's like extra materials or whatever it may be. Um, I always build a couple of these. This is the um, log and rock storage right here. And then we're going to need to build production. So we're going to need, uh, one is a hearth. Um, and this is kind of where people congregate and cook food and, and kind of meet up. It's kind of cool whenever you actually build it. Um, there's the crafter area. And this is the uh, person that's going to really get your um, civilization going, so to speak. Because they will build your spears, your weapons, your, your harpoons for fishing. Um, and then we have a skins dryer and I always typically start out with about two or three. Um, if you play the tutorial, I think they tell you to build at least two in the beginning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start three of them and that should be good. Now I was talking about the work areas earlier. So the work areas, um, is we're going to go ahead and, um, create this. This is a massive amount of sticks in this area. So I'm going to go ahead and plant that there. Um, obtain flint. I think I saw two. So there's two pockets of it there, so I'm going to go ahead and plant that there. Um, the more work areas that you place down, um, you're going to see up here my workload is high. Um, part of that is because of how much construction is going on. Uh, the fishing area I learned uh, from one of the earlier games. So if I place the fishing area here and they fish in these two areas, the fish get depleted really, really quickly. So what I did was I actually ended up making two fishing areas, and it seemed to help uh, with the fish population. Seems really, really stupid that, you know, this whole river, obviously, and there's no fish right here, but there'll be some over here. Semantics, but, I, you know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and build an a area where they can gather. This looks like service tree... So it's some kind of fruit, um, and then this is like your grains and your peas and things like that. Excellent source of like um, really not that hard of, 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 of food, um, but you can usually get a pretty good amount um, by doing that. And then stone, um, I'm going to go ahead. If you do it just right, you can, you can kind of hit different areas over here. Um, and that is everything that we can collect right now. Later on, like I said, we can actually get – lumber for our trees um, extract water obviously we have it right here later you can build wells but I've never found a reason in this particular map to do it um, tannin is is from um, certain types of trees and I believe it is the oak tree if I remember correctly I'm just gonna try to find here we go 
Yep, tannin. So if you can get the oak, and you want to be careful not to cut down those trees later because obviously that gives you some good stuff to do um, or good materials. And I think it's for dye, like I said. Um, mud is is same in the uh, rivers here, um, required for different things later on in later ages. And then, of course, your um, mining areas and if you have a bunch of um, mines in the side of the mountains. Um, let's go ahead and speed this up. I usually put it on speed 8. Um, the only one I haven't done yet, I'm going to go ahead and place a couple of them in his hunting areas. And I found, I played this map a couple of times, so we have a, quite a bit of, of wildlife over here to hunt. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and place one over there. Um, and I might later on go ahead and place one more because there's usually quite a bit. See the cave hyenas, and there's usually quite a bit of stuff that usually will pop up over here. So later on, um, we can actually build um, plants so we can actually grow our own crops. And then we can actually build our own. This is like for copper mining. You can actually blend different metals to make you know your bronze. Um, in later ages, you can actually build different types of walls. You start out with like wooden walls, and then you can come up with stone walls and build gates. Uh, it becomes pretty sophisticated and really really cool later on um, with watchtowers and places for your archers to shoot the raiders. Um, now your spiritual and your funerary are kind of. Uh, interesting so the, the pole in the very beginning you can like remember your fallen ancestors um, kind of helps with morale and uh, people will start to get kind of down in the dump so to speak and they can go to this to kind of help um, this was kind of like that stone circle i was talking about earlier and then the funerary is actually like your burial grounds you get a very simplistic one in the beginning and then as you grow you'll need those uh, megalithic ones to build the more complex ones um, and then our transport. So later on, we can actually build these sleds that will make it much, much more efficient to drag, you know, the rocks and the food and, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and then eventually we can domesticate donkeys and we can actually um, have them transport things in carts. So it's kind of cool how they do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and build that spiritual skull temple. Um, and I usually build it kind of right in front of one of these tents. Um, and people will actually come by and, and kind of worship the... Uh, the tent so to speak um, and they'll come by and just kind of pray and you know whatever it may be so we'll get knowledge points and we need knowledge to level up and I'll show you that here in just a second but it could be from hunting an animal from building different types of tents you know whatever it may be um, we'll get knowledge points and they're fairly easy to get along the way and uh, what we do we'll need about five um, knowledge points in the beginning this is our skill tree and we can get, you know, bone tools on up to, you know, more sophisticated tools. This is for archery. We can make slings. Um, food drying is for basically our raw meat. We can cure it and make it so that it's, uh, I, I don't know what the actual kind of difference is. I know you can't um, dry out your, your um, fish and things like that without this. Dog domestication is really cool. I haven't seen any wild dogs, and I haven't played the game long enough maybe to, to tell you. They seem to automatically just come to your civilization whenever you get this. Um, but later on, you can get dog training. It'll actually uh, help you with hunting. It's super, super cool. Um, and then you get your leather making. And um, I never really do too much on the funerary. Um, personally, I, I usually don't have too bad uh, morale. But if you have morale issues, you can definitely go down this uh, skill tree, and it usually helps out a lot. Um, these in here in, in gray will actually allow you to un unlock the next um, era. And whenever you get this, so if I have 15 points, I can go ahead and unlock this. And as long as I have everything obviously before the in the skill tree, um, I can go ahead and do that. And it allows you access to this. And as you progress, obviously more and more complex, you can get um, obviously domestication, different crops. Um, this is where you get your walls and different types of mining, your megalithic structures, whatever. Um, like I said, so each era, you're going to need to unlock different types of things to get there. So, so we have collected, oh, what is that? Oh, that's an ancient bison. There's a boar. So quite a bit. No, we really won't have any issues hunting um, a lot of animals. I usually put a couple of them. I usually put maybe like one here um, and one on the other side for hunting and, and have no issues ever getting food. Um, so we have no storage slots left. We need to hurry up and get these built. We're pending the sticks right now, but our, our workload is really, really high. I'm going to see there's actually a trophy later on for hunting a woolly mammoth. And usually they're like way out here. Um, and they're super, super cool. And they're actually really hard to kill because they'll stomp your guys, like step all over them and use their horns. I mean, it's kind of funny. Oh, hold on. Let me see what we got right here. 
So this is a woolly rhino, um, and that was one of the species that I told you eventually will go extinct later on. Um, really cool. If you ever get a chance to kind of um, read up on these, like old Ice Age type of animals, the cave bear, all these things, um, basically larger versions of, of the things that we have now. It's super, super interesting. I remember playing, um, what was it, uh, the Ubisoft game. Oh, gosh, the I can't remember the name of it now, but um, the one where the – you actually play as the ancient civilization um, that was like 10,000 BC and you get to like ride the animals and like, it was super, super fun. Um, so a boar has escaped. You don't get any points. Obviously if they escape, that means your people um, just aren't efficient right now. Um, so we have our storage tent up and running. We need to get this crafting up and running so that we can um, go ahead and build better tools so we can build our bone tools and, and whatever that may be. So this, we have enough points for our first um, item, basically, our, our first upgrade. Um, and I say item because I will eventually we'll unlock better things to, to build. So I'm going to go ahead and do the food drying. And I usually build all these kind of right by the water because um, you're pretty much going to be coming in from the hunt, which is my hunting area over here. So they've got, they'll actually swim across the, the river right now, the, the people will. Um, so I usually build one of those and then I will usually build a couple more. I usually build about two of them, um, in the beginning just to kind of get, uh, the good food arriving. So this is a trader and he will have different types of things. So it's kind of cool. They'll either have food, um, different items, and they even have things in the skill tree that you can unlock. It's usually around a hundred, 150. It goes up with each age. Um, and you can trade if you have enough items to trade you can go ahead and unlock that perk right away it's kind of cool and and i'll show you some tips on that later i usually trade a lot of my tools i usually build a lot of extra tools um, and trade for that um, in the beginning i so i really have nothing to trade him that he would want we're pretty good on food right now so i'm going to go ahead and pass right now he's got pretty much everything that i've got but they'll come from time to time and the more the larger your civilization the more traders will end up coming and the different kinds of things that they'll end up having. So it looks like we've got our skins drying right now. Um, our people, he's just standing around. Oh, what? Oh, that was a trader. I was like, why are you not working? <laughs> so up here, like I said, we're, we still don't have the space that we need. Um, so like I said, our population will not grow until we have enough tents for everybody. Um, it also helps when storms come and they can actually seek shelter and, and get away from the elements, so to speak. Um, gosh, there's a lot of these uh, bison right here. That's kind of nice. I don't know what we're hunting them with, our hands. I don't know if we're slapping them to death or what, but um, yeah, they're coming up. So eventually... Um, you will have like your wolves or your cave hyena, you know, some type of predator will come and they'll actually attack your village sometimes or, or certain people if they're in the area. So you got to kind of watch out for that. I've been attacked by different, uh, I think it was like mountain lions, cave bears, all kinds of different things um, can come into your uh, settlement. And then you, later on, you also have to worry about raiders coming in. And usually they're really not a huge threat. Um, I've really had maybe two, three, five at the most that come in. They're really usually not, uh, like I said, any kind of a threat. My population's always been, you know, more than they have ever had come at me anyway. I wish there was kind of an option where if like you started attacking them, like you could absorb some of the stragglers into your settlement or something like that. I just, I just thought that was, that would be kind of cool. Or you could have like another settlement somewhere over here. Like if you could find one and you could like ask them if they wanted to be a part of it or anything like that. It, I just, some cool features that I thought would have been really, really cool to have. So our totem pole or whatever you want to call it has been built and that guy was kind of, you know, honoring the dead or whatever it may be. So their their morale and their happiness will actually go up whenever they have that. So it's kind of important to get that in the beginning so that way you don't have a bunch of frowny face people like you have over here. And you can say that already start to rise once they do that. So it's kind of cool. It definitely has its purpose. And 
and we actually have enough um, to go ahead and get another skill I'm gonna go ahead and get the bone tools that will help us with our hunting it'll help speed along our progress and get more knowledge so this is our crafter that we built earlier. So now that we have bone tools, um, earlier if I did not have that, we would just have the wooden tools. So the first thing I'm gonna do, a biface is basically a knife. And you want one for about every person in your tribe. So I'm gonna go ahead and start out with five, just so I can get some other production running. And like I said, it's always good to build some extra of these uh, so that you can trade them with the trader later on. Cause like I said, they've got all kinds of different things, whether that be food for your population, um, all kinds of different aspects that you can trade so it's it's kind of like in in minecraft as you build things they get more valuable so you know a stick isn't very valuable on its own but as you kind of so this is uh, they become more valuable as you refine them and, and make them into something um, so horses later on can actually be domesticated um, for right now you would actually kill them and, and sadly eat them <laughs> in the beginning but um, it is kind of cool later on like I said when you domesticate them you can actually run after them capture them tame them so we now have our food dryer up and running and we have some meat uh, curing on it right now um, you'll actually see some fish uh, later on whenever they catch the fish they'll actually dry so he's actually catching some fish right now um, whenever he brings those back they'll actually dry in there as well So children actually do not work. It's all the adult population. So you'll you'll notice um, that if you try to get a child to do something like hunt or anything like that, it'll tell you that they, they can't do it until they're an adult. So this is one of the annoying things about the game. I, I do hope that they patch this. And whenever there's a storm that goes on, it, it busts your speed down to normal, which I like. Like I said, it's like slow motion in my opinion. This is normal speed. Um, I always try to keep it on 8 so we can kind of get it moving. So we have actually reached our 5 um, points needed to unlock another technology. Um, I like to actually get dog domestication. And like I said, I have never seen any dogs in the wild. Um, usually I'll highlight a big area and there's some type of animal that will be present. So that's like an old ancient goat, I guess. Um, all kinds of stuff over here. Wow. Okay. So we've got, this is like a big moose basically. And I guess they went extinct. You have your cave lions. We got all kinds of stuff over here. The woolly rhino. I need to, I need to capture that. There's the cave bear. All kinds, of, wow, they, all kinds, of, like the circle of life over here. <laughs> I'm going to have to go down there. I have to remember that area. But like I said, I want to go ahead and start getting some good tools. We're now on our spears. Let's go ahead and get some more fishing tools. And then let's go ahead and make a couple more of our knives. Now, we, oh, we hunted our first wild horse. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, Lost my train of thought because I saw that horse. It's kind of funny. Um, so here's some of the fish that I was talking about earlier, and they'll actually hang them up on this food dryer as well. I'm going to have plenty of storage, so I'm going to actually add to our storage. Um, I found it's best to have two of the wood piles. And then I'm going to go ahead and get... Let me see here. Get some more rock storage as well. So our storage tent uh, has some, looks like we started out with some wooden spears. I'll probably trade that one away now that we have the bone. Um, this is another thing that's kind of like, you, you could relate it to Minecraft in that your wooden picks and your diamond picks obviously have different levels of durability. Um, so like I was talking about earlier, the composite tools has been, um, if I go ahead and trade that, I can get that knowledge right away. His commission is high because our settlement is very, very young. Um, now, bone is worth two. And as I said, if we craft it into something, it's now worth seven as a bone harpoon. 
Um, we do not need the wooden harpoon. We do not need the wooden spear anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and trade those away. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take their food because um, it's something that it, you just always seem to need that kind of stuff. And then I'm going to go ahead. Maybe I'll get some. I'll just go ahead and get some logs. So this is what I was talking about earlier. So the cave lion, um, anytime there's kind of some type of an event, it busts this down to slow motion, right? So a cave lion has decided to attack our civilization. It do, it's kind of weird. Like nobody seems to know, right? So I'm going to have these guys go ahead and attack and rally forth. Oh, that was the traitor. I was wondering why he was not. And it has a certain amount of health, right? So we were, we were actually good. We got three on one. We were able to actually go ahead and, and take that take care of it no problem now if a group of them attacked that would have probably been the issue um, where we probably would have lost a guy or two um, we, were, we were able to get one meat two two skins and uh, one bone out of this this lion and it's kind of nice like I said this is normal speed I don't know this seems really really slow to me but that's just me all right we still don't have oh we're still pending the dry skin so that'll help Hopefully he's bringing it to that tent. Oh, yeah. Okay. So now we'll have a, a population surplus, and it'll say, you know, people will come by. Um, you'll have nomads that'll, that'll eventually come by and actually join your settlement. It's kind of cool. And just like the game in Banished, you can, you can place, you know, infinite amount of stuff. I mean, I could place tents for miles and miles and miles. I don't have the material um, to actually do it, but you can go ahead and plan out your city, so to speak. Um, so it looks like this gal actually contracted a disease. Not much you can really do about it at this point. Um, we have the dogs now coming in. Like I said, I've never actually found them in nature. They seem to just kind of come by whenever you get dog domestication. Um, we have some more points over here. So um, I usually click on dog training. Um, the reason why is that they'll actually help you in hunting tasks, like I said. Ooh, that's a donkey. And some more horses. So now we have space for three more individuals uh, and two humans have actually joined my settlement like I said so now we we have a good decent population now kind of helps uh, that we don't have to work wait for like the cycle of children to grow up and, and become adults it's it's definitely kind of annoying when they do that um, glad I bought glad I built all three of these for sure because we are definitely definitely utilizing them I go ahead and build some more of these knives while we're doing that. And ooh, we got some more ancient bison over here. Um, these are basically the cattle of the ancient world is what I found. So later on when we get cattle domestication, these will be the ones that we can actually later um, domesticate. It seems to be hit or miss though. It's really, really odd and I, I don't know exactly. Um, somebody wants to comment if they kind of know. We got some bears over here, wow. Um, some of them you'll have where you can domesticate and some of them you can't. It's really, really odd. I don't know. They're all wild. I don't know why some of them you can see. So the donkeys, some of them you can domesticate, some of them you can't. I don't get it. I don't know if you have to click a group of them. I, I don't know. It seems really odd to me, but. So up here, we can actually kind of see how much of our meat, whether it's raw or cured. We have a total of 12. Um, like I said, so we have so many of the sticks, the vegetables, um, bone, flint, all of our different kinds of skins um, that we would need. So it kind of this is kind of a running tab. And then as you progress through the ages, it'll actually show you different materials that you'll have at that time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unlock the tanning. Um, this one would only unlock the flint pickaxes, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so I tend to wait on that one personally. Um, the funerary, like I said, it, it, it tends to be if your morale is really, really low. Usually don't have too much of an issue in that. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and unlock the tanning, which will unlock another building. And it is the tanner. And I believe, if I remember correctly, we can have a new work area. Yep, so we can now collect tannin. And there's like five different trees over here that we can collect that from. So that's a new work area. We are down to 33% balance. So I'm gonna, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have another hunting area. Um, and typically what I do is I have them kind of spread out. So this seems to be a pretty good little hunting area that I'm going to go ahead and add. So we have room for 12, which is only three more people. So I'm going to go ahead and get ahead of the curve. And I'm going to go ahead and build one more of these tents. I thought I placed a work area for... Yes, I did. So you can increase the number of people that you have working to collect the amount, you know, on these work areas. So if you want, you know, five or six people collecting stone, whatever it may be. Looks like it's snowing. Um, so you actually get some points. You'll actually get some knowledge points for surviving the winter um, and cold weather and things like that. So it's kind of cool. Um, this was a pretty good little overview. I think I'm going to go ahead and stop the video at this point. And I'm going to actually go ahead and give another video. I have another game actually um, that's actually more advanced. So they have like the huts um, and all kinds of cool stuff like that. I think I'm going to kind of show a different video of later in the ages, but I hope this was kind of a good beginning overview. Um, hope it was helpful and I, I hope it was kind of fun to watch. Um, I definitely appreciate you for watching um, and I appreciate it and uh, stay tuned for the next video.